right, a 2003 Toyota RAV4. Here we go. We're going to cut keys for it, and we're going to program them in. Kind of a strange vehicle. There should be work. a key code on this door lock. This is the passenger door lock. We're going to cut a key based on the code that we think is on this lock and put it in the ignition, and then we're going to try to program the computer up in this car. When you open up the passenger door lock, you see a little black round plastic piece. You take that plastic piece off, that exposes a retainer on the inside of that lock, excuse me, of that hole, and there is the bolt right there that we got to take out so we can remove the lock to read the code stamped on it. So we use a, a Torx a T30 to loosen up the bolt in there and we'll take the lock out and read the code. So I pull the lock out and lo and behold we have a key code right there. One three zero three one. Right now, cut that. This is the bad boy right here. We got everything all situated up in there. We're gonna do this. Before we cut that expensive transponder key that has to be programmed in this car, we're gonna cut a test key on this ultra code machine here. This key here for the car, we're going to go over and try it now. We're on the driver's side. Okay, good deal. It works in the driver's door. Inside so something was loud. We're sticking in the ignition. Oh, yeah. We got joy. So much joy. Okay. Now, we're going to have to deal with this transponder to make this car run. According to Tech Pubs, this vehicle uses this type of transponder key. This is a OEM factory key here that we're going to cut here. And now we're going to try to start doing some programming here. That's my little tag right there. Check it out. Uh, this car, it's a it's a Korean version of a Toyota. So what normal what the publications say is that. You, you take the, if it does use a transponder, you take the ECU out, which is from behind this glove compartment here, and you can reflash that. However, on these cars, say up to like 2005, if they do have a transponder, they're not using the regular Denso ECU. So, what you do, if it's not using a Denso ECU, you use a Type 1 system and you program or you resplash the ECU as a Type 1 using the OBD connector. Here we go. So we selected a Type 1 system. Now we're going to try to go ahead and do the reset here. Special function, reset the immobilizer. Oh, yeah, baby. 16 minutes from now, we should be going zoom, zoom. Looks like we're moving right along here. About six minutes into the 16 required to reset the ECU, which is the immobilizer portion of it. See this little red light flashing right here? But well, when we're done, that red light is just going to be solid. That's the security light. Okay, it's just going to be solid. And we're going to actually have to turn it off manually. I'll show you how to do that. It helps to have a strong battery before you start programming. So I put a booster on here. 
looks like we've gone through about 11 minutes already so we got about five minutes left I really thank God for these opportunities to bring this kind of information to you uh, this is stuff that you're not always gonna learn in a book or even in a classroom some of these things you learn by practical experience there we go there we go there we go you see it right there procedure is complete okay so this Delco style ECU you can reset as a type 1 system the human mind is a great thing understanding and knowledge is, a, is, 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 is priceless so now this key is programmed in. The ECU is reset, the immobilizer reset rather, and this key is programmed in. Something I want to show you so that you don't get confused. Don't get confused between this alarm system right here, which is your uh, vehicle security system uh, for your doors and your key fob and all that kind of stuff don't confuse that with the security immobilizer right there okay now we're going to test our key by starting the car here we go oh baby we're done